Hello everyone. Today we are going to be continuing to chapter 3 and today we're going to be looking at parallel lines and transversals. And so we're going to be applying more of those definitions that we learned last time with those angle pairs. So the corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior. Now we're going to learn about some properties of them when they're with parallel lines. So first a definition that we need to know is that a theorem is a statement that can be proven. And so we have postulates. Those are ones that we don't have to prove. They're just kind of given. We have definitions. We know those. A theorem, however, is one that we can actually do a proof for to prove that it is the case. And this will come into play later on in the year when we do some proofs. But that's an important definition to know. So for this first video, we're just going to go over some theorems that we have. The first one is corresponding angles theorem, and that says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So this is how most theorems will be set up. It will be set up in this if then statement and that basically says if this first part is true then the second part is true. So one theorem that you could do in real life I guess is if it's raining outside and I don't have an umbrella then I'm going to get wet. Something like that. And so what this theorem tells us is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so that's super important, these two lines have to be parallel, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So that means if I were to go with this angle, the congruent angle for that would be here. Those corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And another one I can do is say this one. It's going to be congruent with that one. And remember those arcs just mark congruence. Now the alternate interior angles theorem that says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. So that would mean that this angle is congruent with that angle And this angle is congruent with this angle. So they're equal in measure. And the alternate exterior angles theorem that says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate exterior angles are, you guessed it, congruent. That angle is congruent with that angle. This angle is congruent with this angle. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit different. For the consecutive interior angles theorem, that one says if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So in the first three cases, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles, those are all congruent. They all have equal measure. The only one that's different is the consecutive interior angles. Those ones are going to be supplementary. So if this was angle one and angle two, that would mean that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is equal to 180. And usually you can kind of look at the picture and tell which ones are going to be congruent. So like for instance, if I'm looking at these alternate interior angles, this one's a little bit small, that one's a little bit small. You can kind of tell that they're the same. Same thing with these. Where for the consecutive interior angles, you can see that this angle is acute while this angle is obtuse, so obviously they're not going to be equal. And then the last one, so this is kind of from last chapter, we learned about vertical angles. And so the vertical angles congruence theorem says that vertical angles are congruent. And so if you recall, vertical angles are the ones that are opposite of each other, like this. 
where they make the x, they're the ones that are opposite of each other. And so those two would be equal. So that's going to be really important to remember for this chapter. Again, we are going to be using vertical angles a lot. Some other things that we are going to be using for this section is linear pair. We learned about that in chapter one. And those are those angles right next to one another at the same intersection. They form a line. These adds equal 180. So if I was looking at, let's say, let's, let's draw one. The linear pair would be like these two angles. They're at that same intersection, but they're right next to each other. And so what this tells me is that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is equal to 180. Or another one is two and three, those are also a linear pair they form a line. And so those are going to add to equal 180. And other things to remember is supplementary angles. Those are two angles that add up to 180. Complementary are angles that add up to 90. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll go on to the next one where we will actually be starting to find measures of angles using these theorems.